Hey everyone, Eric Way of the Rockin' H, and tonight we are going to tape and paint the truck, show you how I do it anyway, because um, there's been a number of people saying, hey, I don't know what tape to use, I don't know this or that or whatever else, and I thought, you know, it's just time to clear the air and let's just do something and allow you guys some time to ask questions and, and let's get this thing started, right? So what we're going to do at this very second here is we're just going to wait. Um, it's 7.56 here in Dodge City, America, and we're going to let the crowd gather up. We're going to let YouTube do its thing. Hi, Gitlin Farms. Good to see you. And uh, so really, this is um, we're just going to have a waiting period here for about four more minutes. Um, so this is a perfect time to ask me questions that don't really pertain to the show. So you can do that now. And what else? And if there's something you want to see here in the lab, let me know. I'll be glad to give you a quick tour. I'll wait for people to gather in. Um, so I said it started at 8, so we're just going to wait and chill out till 8 o'clock and go there. And we have Cal Kingra here. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. So, yeah, we'll let YouTube let everybody know we're live, and then uh, we're going to go start at 8 o'clock. Leg arms, hey, look at you. Ha, <laughs> this is just fortuitous. Okay. Since we have leg arms watching, I'll just show you this real quick. This is the truck we're actually going to put tape on. I actually did two of these. Uh, if you watch Boker Farms on YouTube, I did two of these. I did one a long time ago just to learn how to do it, and then I did two more. Uh, and I did my paint job, and I screwed up the hood hood stripes. I went back and looked at a photo I, I managed to find or watched a video or something, and I thought, oh my gosh, totally biffed the silly hood uh, stripes. So I, I just thought, oh, heck with it. I'll strip them down and redo it. So that's kind of where we're at. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Good to have you here. So we have three more minutes, and then uh, we'll let this uh, get going. So we're going to use a couple of different kind of products of tape. We're going to use some paint. We're actually going to paint one, and then I've actually painted one already. And we'll we'll un we'll take the mask off here and see if my skills are polished and perfect. We'll see. So who knows? I tell you. When I do a live video like this, and I actually do a physical product project where I'm trying to do it right, and then uh, it just always explodes. That's why I like doing pre-recorded video, because then I can edit out all the junk, all the mistakes. <laughs> That's what stinks. Hey, I hate the mistakes, but I make them. Cheers, guys. We're going to make lots of them. All right. So it's 7.58. Well, I have you here. We'll just take a little cruise around the shop. I'll show you what I'm working on anyway. Speaking of masking, so um, I have to post a picture in the comments, but I'll show you this board I'm doing. I got this guy here in Kansas. Lives out at Tribune, and he's got a Ford L9000, and this is the base coat, so I've got to mask this thing off. This is all going to be solid blue. It's going to be a silage truck. It's going to be solid blue, and it's going to have some red stripes up here, and then... Um, it's going to have a red stripe, two red, no, four red stripes and then a silver stripe. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I'm ever going to pull this off. I was actually going to work on that one tonight, and then I thought, nah, that one's going to be painful. Okay, so what else are we cooking on? All right, let's take a look. I'll flip you around. So I ordered paint today uh, for all of these T660s. I got, a, I got six T660s and two, whoop, right there, two of these T800s. And um, they're all going to be radiant red. It is an absolutely stunning shade of red. I can't hardly wait for it. Woohoo! I'm so excited. Then I've got this uh, cab over Pete. Uh, I've never done a cab over Pete before anyway. So I've got to put some... Uh, these again, wicked stripes. I don't know how this is going to turn out. We're going to find out. And then I've got this one. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got this uh, 359P. This is pretty awesome. Uh, this one is going to, this is solid red, of course, as you can see, but then it's going to have orange seminal stripes down the side. So I'm really excited for that one. And this shade of red is really, really pretty. Did I airbrush this? No, I did not. And it looks like I could use a little bit more paint right in that crease between the fender, between the uh, the hood and the fender. You can see a little, I need to put a little more paint right there. No problem. But anyways, I got I ordered decals for this one. So this is going to have orange seminal stripes, and that's what that's going to have. 
and then the rest of them are all so I've got one two and then ten of those actually eight so uh, that's for um, my own harvest crew I'm putting together another harvest crew I bought six 7150 case Con case international combines the new retro looking ones so it's pretty cool I got those uh, on order those should be up here any day sometime uh, depends on when my dealer gets them and then uh, all those trucks are gonna go in that fleet and then that radiant red I'm super excited to spray that I bought a half quart it's going half pint half pint it's gonna be awesome all right so I think it's close enough you say to one let's do this okay Hey everyone, it is Eric with Rockin' HTV, and tonight we're going to tape and paint. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, there are a thousand ways to tape and paint. There's probably people that do it way better than I do, but this is how I do it. I do get reasonable results, and then sometimes I flat knock it out of the park. So I'm going to show you what I do. We're going to do this live. I've got one truck we're going to tape and paint, and then i got another one that I've already taped and painted earlier tonight and we're going to uh, take the mask off and see how I did. Follow in the steps that I'm gonna show you, okay? So what we're gonna do before I get too far, I wanna plug in, ooh, maybe I'll plug in. There we go, there, we got more power. And then we're going to get you turned around over here. Oh, and you'll look at my ceiling, how about that? So this is what we got. Okay, now I won't be able to see your comments at this moment. I'm just going to focus on working and trying to get this right and give you guys a really, really good tutorial. So this is a Welker Farms truck. This is their 9370 that we did a year or two ago. And uh, I actually had this all done, and I didn't like the way it turned out because I totally biffed and screwed up the hood uh, stripes. The hood stripes, I totally screwed those up. I don't... Anyway, we'll get into that. But anyway, so I just thought instead of trying to fix that i just thought now oh, we'll just strip it down and redo it because i had just enough paint to give this another coat now uh i started with the base coat uh of tan if i had to do it over i'd probably put the brown down first uh and then do the base coat but we don't i didn't do that so we're just going with the, what it is so the way this is going to work there's going to be a tan stripe and let me get my pointer out tan stripe we got a mask off a of tan stripe here okay then we got a mask off in here uh, because this will be orange at some point. There will be an orange decal here. And then I got another, um, there's going to be another tan stripe up here. And then there's going to be brown and another tiny brown one in there. I know, hard to explain, but this is what, oh, and then there's going to be on the hood, there's going to be brown stripe down the hood on both sides, you know, kind of using this center line this this pillar right here between the two windshields that pillar there's going to be um two brown stripes here here that kind of go up to about this point in the hood so we got to mask that off too and paint that brown so let's start with tape what am i using okay this is scotch brand automotive grade painters tape this is what i'm using for the mask i'm using this uh what is this one and a half and then i'm also using quarter inch so these are the two types of tape that I use, uh, not exclusively. And then I have, so this is, I think 3M makes another, makes the same color or kind, so you could use 3M, but I bought this at a Napa Auto Parts here in Dodge City. And like I said, it's Scotch brand. Uh, it's expensive, crap, holy smokes, this stuff is, these three rolls of tape when they were new were 55 bucks or something like that. And then this is, I think this is a 3M product. I can't tell anymore uh, on the inside, but this is uh, like eighth inch tape or three sixteenths maybe. Uh, but this is kind of a vinyl tape that works really well and it bends and makes corners really well. Works super well. And then, what am I doing with DOT tape? Okay, this is actually um, decal paper that just has silver and red ink on it. And I've used decal paper instead of so I have a, a graphic artist or a decal supplier that instead of using the decal for the color on a truck, I will use the decal as a mask and actually paint what I want on, if that makes sense. 
So, and that has worked super, super well. If you go and look in the, on my Rock and H Facebook page, if you go in there and look for a kind of a purple and silver truck and then a, a red, it's a purple and silver 389 Pete, and then you look for a red and white 379 Pete, so 389 and 379, purple, purple and silver, red and white, and red and white has what looks like flames, but there's stripes going down the side of the hood. That was made with a mask, and that's all paint. There's no decal. I, so I used a cut decal as a mask, and it works slick. So since I have a lot of this on hand, I'm going to use this as part of my mask, if that makes sense. So, without further ado. So if you have more questions on that process, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section, all right? Don't hesitate to ask. I will be glad to help you in any way I can. Now, I don't necessarily want to do it for you, but I'm glad to help you. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is get ready for the... Holy cow, hold on. i got to get rid of the pain. That's some of my... There. So all you're going to want for this project is you're going to need some tape for masking. And here it is. 3M vinyl and then scotch uh, masking tape. So I'll leave those where you can see them. And then I'm using this decal paper that's looks that's D, actually DOT tape for uh, part of the mask. Because I was painfully working on this, uh, trying to daydream earlier today how I was going to do this. Because the first stripes I did were great, but I think these will actually be better. So there's going to be some metallic brown on the bottom. And then a tan stripe. Okay. And one thing I would warn you, if you guys choose to do one of these replicas like I'm doing, I'm going to warn you that this Earl casting is ridiculous and dumb. And why do I say that? Because this casting is not straight. It looks warped to me, and to get this decal paper straight is... Very, very different. Well, it's not very, very. It's just, I'm exaggerating. It's, it's, you can do it. This is a bit of a challenge, that's all. So, I'm not prone to hyperbole. Sometimes I get a little crazy, and I start. So, whenever I exaggerate, you just say, Eric, calm down. Okay, so you can already see that uh, this, 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 this cast is just kind of dumb. But, if you're going to make a 9370, this is the only game in town. And the nice thing about this is, if you want a practice truck, you can pick these up for 10 bucks at a garage sale. Or out of some kid's toy box, or a farm toy show, or wherever. And you've got a really, really awesome, economical way to learn. Which I totally recommend. Totally, totally recommend. So... You'll notice I cut this back here for good reason, and then it's hard to wrap it all the way around and then get your lines straight to where they kind of match up on both sides. That's, that's the reason, okay? So I like to start from the front and go toward the back uh, for no particular reason other than that's just my style. And, you know, many guys are going to tell you that there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and, and there probably is. And my opinion is, if you get the results you want, I don't really care how you did it. Okay? That's my rule. If, it, if you do some sort of masking procedure, and your results are phenomenal, and you're overjoyed, you did it right. Okay, so this one's already a bit low. Where did I stick that one? Okay, I need to raise this whole thing up a little bit. Yep. So on the other side, I was I had a little bit more of this little compartment thing, that little door thing, exposed. And on the driver's side here, I covered up too much of it. So here we go. And I'm up, pop, oh, here we go. Now you can see better. Okay. All right, I'm liking that better already. So I'm using this line right down here as kind of my straight edge. 
So I'm not measuring anything. I'm just kind of, I'm eyeballing. I'm not kind of eyeballing. I am eyeballing. Okay, then we're going to wrap it around and match it up there. Okay. Now I'm willing to sacrifice this DOT tape for one reason. I've got a bunch of it, too. Um, uh, it's not that expensive, so I don't mind burning it up. Now we're going to pull off practice here so I can have to make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to use blue painter or blue tape. If I can find my edge. Where's my edge? There you are. And if any of you buy this stuff cheaper somewhere else, awesome. And if you have a better product that works for you, I've heard the Tamiya tape works really well. Awesome. If it's working for you, you're getting the results you want, you're doing it freaking right. And if you're practicing and practicing and it's not working out and you're frustrated, then that means you need to try something new. But uh, as long as you're getting the results you want, you're not going to hear me criticize your work. So as I'm kind of pulling this tape, I'm pressing it down into the lines of the door so we get those creases done. Trying to keep it straight. Now this brown stripe that I'm masking for is really, really thin. On the real truck, it is super, super thin. Well, I, I, I again, exaggerating. On the real truck, it's easy. It's like two inches tall. whoop de doo man. A guy can tape that all day long on a real one. But on these guys, nah, I tell you, nah, that's a new ball of game. That's a new, new, new game. New ball of game. Let me see. All right. Okay. And honest, when I was doing this, you'll notice these gloves here. I didn't put those on. A lot of times when I'm masking like this, I'll put those rubber gloves on, that way my fingerprints and oils from my skin don't get in there and cause fish eye and other contaminants. So now that I think about it, I'm just going to put those bad boys on. Why didn't I do that in the beginning? I don't know. But by handling it, I just don't want any contaminants to muck up my job after you spent 20-30 minutes taping things. I need a little more space there. We do want the brown to show up, don't we? Of course we do. So between the brown and the tan is going to be an orange stripe, and I'm using a decal for that. Could I mask and paint the orange stripe? Absolutely, I could. But I'm afraid I would develop a drinking problem. Okay, that was just a just a hair low. So I'm gonna raise that just a wee bit. So these stripes probably won't be absolute, but they're gonna be okay. They're gonna be alright. You're gonna be okay. Ah, all right. So we're gonna, and you'll notice I'm doing this on an old rag here. This is actually a pair of my dress pants that I wore out. Uh, and I do that just so I don't scratch paint or anything like that on a hard surface. Oh, why aren't you cutting, you dog? 
Huh, I know why. Let's do it this way. There. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to lay down um, one more thin stripe. And I probably should have lowered all of these a little bit. I'm going to run out of real estate here in a minute. The nice thing about these models, though, is you're not out of a whole lot. If, you, if you're not happy with the way it's turning out, just start over. I mean, you're not out of a whole lot. Just give it a go, play with it until you get it the way you want it, and then when it's the way you want it, you've done it right. Yeah, dadgummit. Um, see, I need to lower that, that tape. I need to lower that. All right, hang on here, guys. So what I'm, what I should have done was put this DOT tape clear down here a little bit. So, uh, rats. Here, oh, I got another idea. All right, here's my other idea. Okay. And when you make one mistake, you don't have to can the whole bit. All right. Here's what we'll do. Here's a thinner piece of tape for that orange stripe. Or what will be an orange stripe. So we'll just we'll just do this a little differently, right? We just won't have a stick and orange stripe on this one. How do you like that? Okay, see how I'm doing that? But see how much real see how much more I gained? So in between these two pieces of tape I'm laying down is going to be a brown stripe. Okay. And then we're going to take my fingernail here and press that into the die cast. And then I'll show you the magic in just a few minutes how we're going to seal this so we don't get any paint bleed underneath our tape. That is probably one thing that vexes more builders than anything is that silly paint bleed and I'll show you how to solve that. And I wish it were magic but it's not. And then when you see it you're gonna say oh wow why didn't I do that this whole time? Just like I did. Okay, see, I don't know if you can see that in the shot there, but uh, because the casting is not perfect, the tape is wanting to walk on me. Now, if there's one saving grace here, you're saying one end to the other. Well, there is one saving grace, and this is where models give you a little latitude, and probably even the real stuff, too, is that um, we're going to have straight pipes going up the side, which will kind of break up the line a little bit. So if you do happen to make a mistake, you're like, golly, how do I fix that? That looks dumb. You can kind of hide it a little bit with exhaust by the mere fact that you broke up the line. Now, if you didn't have that exhaust there, yeah, you'd probably see it and then you'd be mad at yourself and tick you didn't spend more time or at least uh, give it the old college try to do a little better. Okay. And what <laughs> I'm actually putting my leftover tape on the phone here. Okay, now we can come back with this other stripe. You come here, you dog. Now maybe you can see it again. God, 
I have a notion I'm not going to be pleased with this when I pull it, but oh well. And that's what I always say when I'm working on stuff. Like, eh, that may not be so great, and then it turns out fine. See right here. Look at that. I don't care for that. We're going to try and pull that down. Okay, let's see what we got Yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and pull that a little tight and then tap it down and cut. So for those of you that have just kind of joined, <clears throat> that have just joined, uh, you might say, why are you using DOT tape? Well, because one, it's sticky enough to stick and works as a great mask. I happen to have it on hand and it's cut to the right size already. And we love that. I just think that is fantastic. Of course, I've never used DOT tape, but I've used a product very similar to it. I really like how it's nice and thin, and it gives me just the right tech, right spacing I'm looking for. And one other thing I'd let you know, I'm not using my airbrush on this, I'm just using good old rattle cans because I know there's a lot of you that while you'd like to have an airbrush, you don't have one. So, I thought it should, excuse me for getting my finger in the camera there. So I thought what would be nice is just to show you how it can be done with uh, just regular old tools. Okay, so now, uh, so what we've done here is, so this is going to be tan, in here is going to be brown. This will be tan, but it'll end up being an orange stripe. That'll be brown. Uh, this will be tan again. Well, and this will just be the top color. Okay. So now we can go ahead and use a bigger tape now because, oh, well, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself again. I have a habit of that, haven't you noticed? We're going to go ahead and we're going to tape up here because we got to put two stripes on the hood. Sounds like the emergency helicopter's coming in from a delivery in Wichita, I bet. I live right near the hospital, so we get to hear the uh, helicopter come and go quite a bit. Okay, now we're going to use a little more tape. Now, now we got to put stripes on the hood. So we're going to use this tape here for the stripes on the hood. And we're going to start with one down the middle. So on the real truck <clears throat> that I'm replicating, there is... Uh, brown stripes with orange trim on the hood. Is that right? That looks straight. That doesn't look straight. Let's try this. A little different. There. I think I can live with that. Cut that. Ta-da! And then... Now I have no idea how big their orange stripes are on the real truck. So I'm just totally guessing here. And I'm just going to try and make two even stripes on this hood. Actually, we'll just wrap that underneath. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's see if we can get them the same size. Nope, that isn't it. They're not straight at all. Nope, a little more tape here. Nope, a little more tape. There, pull that. Eric, get it over there. Okay, that looks straight to you. <sighs> okay, we're getting closer, guys. Uh, we're getting close to paint. Stay with me. We'll get there. Don't you worry. Okay, now what we need to do is mask off everything we don't want dark brown. Our good fortune, all of this is going to be brown. So we don't have to worry about the bottom. We just got to worry about the top. Here we go. So what I like to do is cut a little more than I need. And then cut it. And let's make this all nice and neat. There. Okay, let's put another piece of tape here. Okay, one thing I have done, and I'll share it with you now, is when I'm taping, is not to pull this, put this tape down tight all the way across. You want to see, leave yourself enough slack so you can push that tape down into corners and different places so you don't have any exposed areas. That works well. Let's do the other side. <clears throat> okay. And I guess I should mention now that we've got a few more viewers, if you were wondering what tape I'm using, this is Scotch brand tape, and I bought it at Napa. It's automotive grade painter's tape. I think you can buy, 3M has a brand. Uh, there's other brands out there. Uh, Tamiya, which is kind of known for just modeling people like us, uh, has a brand that uh, some other guys have said works really, really well. And those are other hobby guys. Uh, I just happened to be at Napa one day buying paint, and I thought, I need tape. So I went and bought this, and it's been working really well. So I just continue to use it. Okay. Let's go ahead and let me get that so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to take that on. Come on, you. Behave. scissors here. Okay. Now we can use a little bigger tape. So this is the Scotch brand painter's tape. Well, the, all the green stuff is Scotch brand, just FYI.
Okay, one more piece, and I think we own this. We can start. I'll show you the tapers trick. I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes I just like to see people work so I can actually see what they did <clears throat> rather than just read something. I like to see it. Okay. All right. Now we've got our tape job done. Uh, we've got a few open spots up here. If you're uncomfortable with this, make sure you put a little more tape over the top of that. You can cover that up, but I'm not concerned at all. Uh, then we need some helping hands, and we are dang close. All right. Now, what's going to happen here, guys? Uh, ooh, shoot. Oh, I see two spots that I didn't. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Two spots. We got to fix those. So what's going to happen here, guys, is a lot of times we're going to spend this amount of time. What do we spend? 30 minutes here? Uh, just taping. We're going to spend 30 minutes taping. And we'll think, oh, wow, this is going to be the greatest thing in the world. Woohoo! And then what's going to happen is you're going to spray color on this bad boy. You're going to peel the tape an hour later or whenever. And you're going to notice paint bleed. Paint bleed is when the top coat, whatever color you're masking off to paint, gets underneath your tape and then bleeds onto the base coat. Oh, my gosh. I have almost lost my religion on more than one occasion because I didn't take time or thought to do the next step. And uh, regrettably, I'm kind of thick sometimes. And uh, yeah, I did not do what I'm about to show you. So what I'm about to show you is this. We want to seal this tape from letting paint bleed underneath the tape we put on. So two things we're going to make sure we're, we've done. Make sure we press our mask into grooves. Okay, make sure we've done that. We did that. You watched me do it on both sides. But now we're going to take, you can do this two ways. You can take clear coat and shoot clear coat over the top of this paint, over the top of your tape. Okay, or you can use the color, the base color, to mat, to seal your tape. Okay, let's go do this over here at the paint booth. Let me get you set up here. Whoops, there you go. Bring the chair over yonder, and here we are. Okay. So, the uh, the base coat of this is called uh, Geo Sand Beige. This is a uh, tester's just bought. Oh, Rustoleum. This I guess Rustoleum product. I bought I bought it at Hobby Lobby, and it was the only color I could get close to what I thought looked like the Welker's color. So all I'm going to do is shoot. A coat of this color over all of my tape to seal it up. Uh, FYI, this particular color sprays work like dog pee. It's terrible. It's horrible and it's gross. I don't like it. But it's what we have. Like my handy hinge that's beautiful isn't it okay so you'll notice that this stuff is just awful paint that tip is just horrible luckily it, it does kind of it'll level out but man is it just total junk anyway so that's going to be the way you can do this with clear coat you can do it with the base coat however you want either way that's going to be fine uh, but just make sure you seal it, especially where you got lots of grooves and stuff in the die cast. Make sure you do that. Just save, you little, save yourself a lot of headache and frustration down the road. Okay, now I already told you at the beginning of the show, if some of you are just tuning in, I said uh, I already painted one of these. I could probably actually use another coat of brown on that, but we're just going to go with it uh, and just see how we did. So now you get to see if I'm full of sand or if I actually know what I'm doing. It's always a guesstimate on if I know what I'm doing. Okay. So 
I did exactly the process you just see. What I just showed you, what I just demoed for you, I did this exact same thing earlier this evening. We're gonna take the tape off and see how we did. See if we got any paint bleed and just see what happened here, right? Let's go. And if you're new to taping and painting, or even if you're a veteran, even if you're a veteran, do not be surprised if you're like, oh my gosh, that looks like total who I'm gonna redo it don't be afraid of that I have uh, yeah just don't be afraid if you don't get it right on the first time don't sweat it ah oh, let's say a prayer people let's hope this turns out perfect the first go speaking of people that did tape well the first go at the model building summit here in Dodge City a couple weeks ago I got a couple guys from Nebraska that show up never done two tones before and one guy did a c65 chevy for his model layout for his own farm and uh and then he did a c65 and oh my goodness they were amazing oh shoot eric look at that i didn't put enough brown up here doggone it well okay well other well that's wasn't the tape's fault that was the painter's fault whose idea was that Guess I was ready for dinner. Um, another thing you got to be worried, uh, concerned about. Sometimes your tape will bring up your paint. I've had a couple guys say, "Eric, it's because you're not doing it right, or whatever," which is probably true. Um, what I will do is I will just spray a little bit of this color on the. Uh, a paint lid or, or anything, a piece of paper or whatever, and I'll just come in here with a brush and just kind of close those up and, and clean them up, especially if there's not very many of them, if it's not very bad. Okay, let's see how the rest of this turned out. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh so nervous, so nervous. Well, it's fairly evident that I didn't get my stripes even all the way around. Ta-da! Well, there's one. Yeah, I totally did not get my stripes even. Okay, so there it is. I'm actually going to leave this tape right here because I'm going to remask that and shoot a little more over it. I don't know. Maybe I'll redo this one. I haven't decided. I'll sleep on it. Then I'll come back and decide. Okay. A couple of things that can happen. One is your paint can't, especially on a really thin stripe like this. I've had this happen before on thin stripes where uh, the actual the paint does come up with the tape, and that's what happened here. Okay, have a little paint bleed right here at the nose. You can clean that up. Again, let this set a day or two. Okay, let it get fully cured. Then you can come back and with a little bit of the top coat on a fine paintbrush, you can kind of dab that thing closed and, and get really, really close to just covering that up and not having to reshoot. A uh, little paint bleed right here around this window and then again over here and here. Golly. And then it looks like my I didn't tape very well right there. Uh, that came up, which was unfortunate. Somebody didn't put their tape down even right there. And then it looks like I got a little tape residue right here or something. And then a little more paint bleed around these two parts here. Um, I don't think I spent enough time pressing my tape into these two crevices right here, these two seams. Uh, by and large, guys, that's basically the way you're going to mask and tape. You can see I didn't do a perfect job this time around. Well, it's okay. I can, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Uh, but this is basically the way you're going to do it. Okay. And then if we, uh, had time here, we'd go ahead and, uh, put the other coat on the other truck, but 
Ooh, there I am. Uh, there we go. But I'm gonna let that get nice and happy. So this is gonna get good and happy. Uh, I'm gonna leave this and then I'll probably shoot paint on it tomorrow, uh, the color, and just see how that one goes. So that's how you're gonna do this, okay? Again, as you can tell, I didn't do a perfect job, an awful job, but it's, actually the first stripes I did turned out better than these. The first ones were better. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. But uh, I did the stripes wrong, so I thought I'm just going to strip it down and start over because I foobarred the stripes so well. That's the way it goes. What kind of questions do we have here? Let's uh, take a look at the comments if there are any. Oh my gosh, look at that. Lots of comments. Let's take a look. I uh, can't see the finish doing a great job. Thank you, Smith Stock Farms. Tracks and Trucks, evening. Here we go. Kyler, how many 9370s are we making? Two. Um, Good work. Thank you, Matt. And Ken. All right. Well, I'm glad you soon in, tuned in. And TMC Custom Garage. Good evening. Thank you for showing up. We've been at this for 46 minutes, so I don't want to keep you guys any longer than we just have to, unless you have some really burning questions that you want to ask. Um, that's basically the lesson right there. That's how you're going to do it. Uh, there's really, it's just going to take you some time, practice, and patience. And I would tell you this, if you start out with a good casting, that makes a lot of difference. Um, these Ertl castings are great, but I, I still think, if you look at this, I don't think they're straight. I, I, you know, I don't think this line is perfect all the way across the bottom. Uh, but that's maybe me, I don't know. Uh, but that doesn't have any, that, that's no excuse for not doing a good tape job, okay? That just means it's poor cast. Uh, so. No, no, that doesn't inhibit your your talent. Uh, that just makes it a bit more challenging in some regard. Uh, but make sure you get one that uh, has good lines that you can really push stuff in. And um, yeah, make sure you, you shoot clear or color over it to seal your tape. And that makes a big difference. And I think, and I did everything with rattle can. I swear by rattle cans. It's a good place to start. Don't go buy an airbrush if you're not in this very deep. Just get good at rattle cans. As your hobby expands, expand into better equipment. Because um, maybe you won't be interested that long. Maybe you just want to do one and done. Who knows? Okay. Uh, we had a question about 3D printing. George Schmidt says, any printing modeling advice? Yes. Uh, printing modeling advice. Go to rockinhfarmtoys.com. Sign up for my newsletter. You're going to get a free gift, The 7 Mistakes uh, for Beginners at... Um, Diecast modeling and collecting. You'll get that free gift automatically, and then you're gonna get um, a series of welcome emails from me, and then you're gonna get a library of content about 3D printing. And this is everything I've learned. I started 3D printing in 2012. Uh, my first model was printed in 2013. Uh, it's right over there, and there's one back there on the shelf on a cab over. Um, but everything I know about 3D printing is in that series. I leave no stone unturned. So just subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get it. And then there's some other content coming after that that I think you'll find valuable as well. But that is the best place to start. Uh, thanks for showing me how to do this. Yes, I have a resin tab over trying to figure out how to paint this. Really? Well, great. Glad you learned something. I appreciate it. Uh, one thing on resin, just make sure it's super, super clean. Um, some resin, not all resin, some resin uh, can fish eye. And it can be the mold release. So when they make a, a mold, they'll spray a release agent in there. So once the, the resin's in it, they can get the resin out of the mold. It's called mold release. Uh, some resin, not all, some resin, uh, whoever's creating it doesn't get all the release agent off and it'll remain on your, your vehicle. You'll shoot color on it and you'll get all these little holes. They look like clear, just round dots all over your model or some places on your model. It'll drive you to drinking. Uh, just make sure your resin is clean. Clean, 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 clean. Hot soap and water. Um, and then some guys use this stuff too. I don't really have any luck with this, but some guys swear by it. I bought it to try it. I don't like it. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Gitling says, do you do a lot of custom tractors or mostly semis? Right now, I'm... My whole uh, business, my whole hobby is lined up in semis. 
Uh, I just, I'm so busy with semis, I don't have any room for tractors. I'd love to do some tractors. I did an 875 Versatile for myself. I did a 7080 for myself. A 7080 Alice Chalmers is because I think they're cool and I wanted one, so I made one. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there are tutorials on both those two builds in diecastlab.com uh, where I show you how I did those start to finish. And those are really not hard builds. Those are good builds to get started with because they're just decals and tires for the most part. So, um, yeah, uh, I've got one guy helping me quite a bit, another guy helping me part-time, and then I throw my son a project or two, and I'm full over here. So, uh, yeah, semis just not complaining, not complaining. Semis take up all my time, and I, I really love semis. They're fun. I don't have any history with semis, but I still like them. I think they're cool. All right. Any other questions before we wrap it up? If you haven't done so, and you like what I'm doing, make sure you comment, sub comment subscribe, and get live notifications. You can do that here on YouTube. Uh, makes a difference and helps expand reach, let other people see what we're doing. Um, yeah, so that would be awesome. And then Diecast Lab, man, all my tutorials, I got so many tutorial series in there, start to finish builds, can't go wrong, it's a great place to go. Um, what else? Let's see if there's anything else. If there's nothing else, I'm probably gonna let you go. All right, Jordan, glad you got what you needed. You are welcome, thanks for tuning in. Renegade, Gitling, I hope I am, hopefully I'm saying that right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, Leg Arms, if you're still here, thanks for watching. All the others that showed up. Matt, I believe, is in there. Uh, yeah, glad you're here and glad you got something out of it. Um, this tutorial came out of uh, the Diecast Lab, which is my Facebook group. Uh, you can join. I let everybody in unless you look like a troll or a robot. Um, but uh, diecastlab.com is... Excuse me, uh, that's No Secrets Lab on Facebook. Gosh, too many labs. The No Secrets Lab is where this idea came from. A guy says, hey, I need help taping and painting, so teach me, and um, here we are. We're teaching. That's what we do. That's what I do. I teach. Love to teach. Matter of fact, if you guys subscribe and like and do all those things YouTube loves, maybe I could make income from YouTube and not do builds, and I could just teach more. There you go. I would rather... I'd almost rather teach than, than do custom builds for people. Because then you can, because then more of you get to learn what to do. And that's better. But if I teach 20 of you to make trucks, 20 of you get trucks. Boom. That's better. All right, guys. I'm done. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.